Hello everyone, Mr. Terminal here for Cloud Infrastructure Services. In this video, we are looking into deploying and installing and configuring proxy server, Squid proxy server on Ubuntu 20.04 on Google Cloud Platform. So there are a bit of configurations to look to after, even after deploying the instance of proxy server. So we are going to go into details and configure it with most important configurations and that should be enough for you to get going and even going a little further so we are at the marketplace the link for this is provided just go for launch and yeah you would see your options what do you want a deployment name defaults are always fine by me zone choose closest to you machine family n1 n1 standard one is perfect for the demo if of course you know your demand if it is higher please go for a higher machine boot disk is again more than enough don't touch the networking if you're using the image again don't touch the networking if you're using the image otherwise of course you have to configure the tcp ports and everything else but that's why we are making our life easy by using the image we will just go ahead and deploy and the deployment manager does everything for you that's the best part uh, we can check into the details of what's being created the entire deployment manager a firewall rule a vm instance perfect you can of course go into the details and look at them So our deployment managers has deployed our deployment, which included the firewall rules and the VM instance. Let's quickly go to the VM instance and look what we have. So the, one more thing about deploy man deployment manager is you get to easily delete all these resources together. That's another handy thing. Let's not waste more time though, because our instance is running and this has a script proxy running inside it perfect now we want to look inside our instance our compute machine what's going on inside so we are going to go for open in browser window and that's is perfect for us for higher security of course you can create ssh keys and disable all that and just ssh and do it but for this right now we are just going to ssh directly into the vm from the browser just takes a little while perfect we are inside the VM now first thing I want to share with you is the configuration that's what we are inside in here for so our configuration is located in etc squid so do go to this directory and there you'll find all squid related files the squid dot configuration squid dot conf is the one we are looking for so we're gonna edit it with root access perfect we are inside the file now this is a big file so we are going to use our search feature to look inside what we have to change right the things just to make life easier for us so just look for acl local net let me yeah this is the one i'm looking for you can search the whole thing if you don't find it once we are here now access control list let me just give you a small introduction is a list obviously that can says who gets to get access or who does not get to have access so we are basically creating a list now right now this control list cons consists of network that you're going to allow to access this proxy so of course if 
you're creating a script proxy there is a bunch of network maybe on your cloud or your local system or your whatever it is so right now it's allowing 10.0.0.0 by hcidr block that's the network block it's allowing that's the default if you want to allow your own network just go for this command type exactly as this is and then your network ip and its range whatever it is so yours basically your cidr block enter it here just in the same format as below and your network should have access to this now it does not have access yes let me correct myself this is just a list so you created a list i'm just going for the default just imagine you have a list now list you need still need to tell the script proxy i want to allow an access to this list so what you do is go for http access uh, you can just oh escape i was on the wrong window no, let me see. http access allow you can search for it So this is the default one that has been allowed the one we all looked at so but but you have to follow the same procedure http access allow and your network name that you just used in my case i didn't use anything so in my case it was local net and it was allowed so in practical purposes you can have different networks that you want to give access to this script proxy so you can't you're going to add all of them and individually give access to all of those lists so that's how we work on giving access on the list basis basically of course, this is just about giving access to the list thing right so and this is the entire format you follow for giving access to a bunch of networks oh, i'll keep that as, as it is next i want to highlight is uh admin address right mm. what that is is let me first go to that place let's go to cache underscore mgr cache manager so this is here we are at the right place in line below just enter the same thing and the email address of someone who is going to administer this proxy what that practically means is whenever this proxy has some sort of an error some kind of problem it always automatically emails to this guy to this email so this is the cache manager a very important thing for an admin to have this is obviously this cannot be a default this is something you have to see for yourself now another important thing that i want to highlight is your port uh, now squid has a default port 3128 that's where it listens to but in scenarios you don't want that so you're going to change that how do you do that search for http port 3128 128 so this is where it's listening to now it's not a choice you can have multiple ports you don't have to erase it of course you can erase it and change it but i just want to add one more port and two two more ports listen at this port as well and listen at this port as well so it's going to listen on these ports and just one more configuration you can do is change your host name now default is just squid proxy sometimes that's not the one you're looking for so what you want to do is search at visible host name that's the file yep just go about the tag again we are only setting these settings near these settings before the comments are because it's practically it's easier to look for them in future when you're editing file otherwise these commands will work 
no matter which part of the file you type basically in it that's how it is so yeah but we are going to type it here visible host name and now your host name you could set it to anyone let me go with script proxy is the default one let me go for script proxy one and that's it that's all you need to do to set up your own host name if you want to change that now another important configuration that usually comes in requirement is people or users or client who are accessing your proxy might not want uh, and you might not want to give them access to all of the internet through this proxy you want to block some websites right so yeah there is a very easy way to do that just need to create a list again just like before and again we are going to create a list uh, add the command somewhere where it makes sense right so we are going to go near HTTP access and just space it out not too allow space perfect this is the place I'm looking for again you can enter it anywhere you want so what we are going to do what is our intention again to block some websites so people who accessing the internet through this proxy don't have access to that website so we are going to create a list of that websites first just again access control list it's going to be an access control list name the list let's name something obvious block websites and dst domain is what we are blocking here or creating a list of we are not blocking it here yet we are just creating a list the syntax is dot and your website name for my example i'm going with facebook and youtube <laughs> nobody should access this who's using that proxy dot facebook.com and dot youtube.com right uh yeah so now the list is created again follow the same format as before http access deny this list block websites and that's it that's the configuration you need to block websites now there can, might come a scenario where you don't need to block website but ports you know, for example you don't want anyone to access certain ports through this proxy default port for all http website is it maybe you don't want them to work through the websites at all to go to any http website with port 80 that means they have access to the secure ones the http s that's just an example but you should know how to do that again we are going to create a list and this time we are going to call it blogged ports makes sense you can call it anything this is just a name but now we are not blocking B dsc domain we are blocking port simple 80 let's say all std websites are blocked and how do we deny it same way deny what do we deny block ports and that's it that's all the plots ports not plots are blocked not all the one we are choosing that is 80 in this case uh let's see what can i share uh, what other configuration we can look for yep uh in some scenarios you might want to read out all of your traffic through the proxy right you just want everyone to force the traffic to the proxy that can be uh, some sort of a usage so like if you're going to intercept users browser traffic by forcing the http traffic to go via your proxy it's like reconfiguring and rerouting and that's what we are looking for all you need to do is go back to your http port the default one or whatever you did 3128 in my case it's this one so whenever force the traffic to i want to force the traffic to this port 3128 the default one so i am just going to write add one word transparent and that's the only configuration you need now there is something mm, yeah that's about this configuration i want to share one last one it's also very crucial it's just called anonymous browsing what that means is exactly what it says so usually when you browse through a proxy the ip address of the user or the client whoever is using the proxy is sent to the website 
and in some scenarios you don't want that right you don't want that to do you want that to happen so there is some tweaking around which we made it far more easier for you so what you're going to do is just type in you can search this and do it itself your choice it's commented out if you look for it but i'm just going to type here and that is by default on we are going to have to turn it off and below it i'm going to share this in an article in the description please do remember to check that out there are tons of settings that i am already tweaked and i'm just going to basically copy paste here so i want you to do that as well <laughs> oh, it's on my other tab let me just there are tons of configuration otherwise i would have gone one by one and it's easier for you and everybody to just copy it right yeah that's done and that's it those are the configurations i wanted to share and that's all of it so with these settings you are completely anonymous <laughs> you're browsing anonymously after you're done uh, just let me point it out even if you tweak one setting i tweaked a lot of them you have to restart you have to save the file and you have to restart the squid proxy so let me just save it I have done all of them at once, so I'm just restarting one time, but if you did it multiple times, you have to do it each time. Squid service, just easy pseudo service, squid, and restart. And that's it, that's your configuration, completely done and managed. if you liked the video and if it helped you please like and subscribe and if you have any doubt and i really mean any doubt feel free to comment we will reach out to you and solve your issues thanks for watching